Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Real Estate Matters with Lightway Homes. As usual, I am Tracy and if you've noticed, there is a change in this episode. I have with me the CEO of Cash Card Property Company in the person of Mr. Wolabi O. Karim. Good to have you here, sir. Thank you. Thank you. It's so, a pleasure um, to be here. So our audience are very sure. They'll be like, oh, who is this? You will know him soon enough with this topic that we're about to bring your way. So this topic is something that touches almost everybody. Whether you've owned your own property before, you've owned it, you've built your home, you've not built your home, it still affects you. And this topic is the things to look out for before renting an apartment. Some people don't know what to look out for. Some people just, oh, I want to change my apartment. And then off they go without guidance, without proper guidance. So today, Mr. Karim will be pointing out things that we need to know before you rent an apartment. Over to you, sir. Thank you so much. Yes. Uh, I'm glad that you brought up this topic mm -hmm. because uh, I would like it or not. After safety, mm -hmm. shelter is the next thing. Shelter. Yes. And uh, when we're talking about okay. shelter, we should be looking at renters and then the ones who are building the rented apartments. Mm. But that's for another day. Mm. And for another day. So hold that thought. So today we're, we're talking basically about renters mm -hmm. and what you should look at. Yes. Yes. Uh, at. I'll be saying that... Uh, Maybe a 65% of uh, people that stay in Lagos, because mm -hmm. I stay and work in Lagos, mm -hmm. do rent an apartment. Many of us, let's not yes. lie, many of us rent apartments. So, if we're looking at that, there are things you should look at before you go ahead to rent a place. Listen, no. So, about itemizing them, okay. and then we did be delving into them one after the other. Sure, great. One is location. Location is very important. You shouldn't be staying on the mainland and you're working in Aja. Hmm, that's, that's far. Like some hundred yeah, kilometers yeah, that's away. That's very far. So as beautiful or as cute or as beautiful that home is, mm. or friendly in prices, mm. location will be a disaster for you. Yeah. Where you calculate the costs. Exactly. Of being and things. if you have to say, okay, when I go on Monday, I stay at work till Friday. And uh, it means you actually stay in your home Eight days in a month. You ask me how. Because you go on Monday, you come back on Friday. You only stay in that house Saturday and Sunday. So are you really utilizing that house? The money that you've paid again. Exactly. So location is a basic thing that you need to look at. Mm -hmm. What is the environment that you're renting in? Now, looking at location and then going deeper into location, the uh, parents... Looking to rent an apartment. Mm -hmm. What's the location of their school children? Mm -hmm. What's the location? What's the environment like? Can you grow your kids in those locations? Mm. So we need to look at this in-depthly. We should not just look at the financial part of renting apartments. Some people will rent apartments in places where after paying of the landlord, they will regret ever doing so. It happens. So location is very key, quite important, and needs to be looked into. Mm -hmm. Number two is agents. Uh, agent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very sure when you are watching us, you are also laughing too, because you've heard one or two. Uh, number two is agents. Okay. And uh, I wouldn't say that all agents are bad, but I wouldn't also vouch for all agents, because in every sector... They have their own black holes the or black and the bad eggs. You know, right? Mm -hmm. But in Lagos, we have met a whole lot. <laughs> a whole bad lot. Eggs. Many bad eggs are had. <laughs> but that does not mean there is no good egg. Exactly. So, when you are meeting an agent and uh, showing to you a particular house, mm -hmm. ask questions. Mm -hmm. Because as a long run, by the time you have met 10 agents on one single property, some people call it long chain. I call it neck chain. Next chain. Yes, <laughs> because next ne next chain is small, uh -huh. and then it goes all around and round and round. <laughs> we call it. You understand? Yes. So, and then you realize that they don't give you adequate information, hmm. which is what you need. You don't know if there is service charge attached to the property. You don't know 
how they are how the electricity is. Exactly. You don't know the electricity bill that has been used. That's for those who are using prorated uh, mm -hmm. billing system. Mm -hmm. And uh, you need to try as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Meet the mandate of the landlord or meet the landlord himself. Mm. Because people have been swindled. A lot. People have paid to agents and the money has not got into the landlord. Mm -hmm. And then you will be looking to claim your apartment that you've rented. One, two months, you you no still not, yes, you are not able to take ownership. And then one, two months is deducted from your rent already, which is just 12 months. <sighs> Since we decide. So you need to look at who you're dealing with when you're talking about agents. Mm -hmm. And then make sure that agent has enough information. Mm, enough information so that now everybody will not be looking lost when pay Kassala wants to bounce. Also, dealing with rent, we also need to look at the agreement. Agreement, this is the legal part because mm. either you like it or not, uh, you would when you rent a place, you would want to a place that you will be for the next 12 months, you want to tweak it a little bit, mm -hmm. and then in agreements, there are limitations, mm. there are things you shouldn't do, there are things you're allowed to do, mm. and there are things that you're allowed to do, and then you return it to the same condition as you meant it. Before you leave. Exactly. Wonderful. All of these are embedded in the agreement. At times they don't talk about it, but when they give you the agreement, if you cannot decipher or understand the kind of English they wrote it in, kindly get a legal counsel who would interpret it in layman's language. Get a legal counsel. In other words, get a lawyer that can interpret <laughs> that can interpret the right. agreement. Because most times, when you uh, don't interpret these things well, you only move one to two things before you go against that agreement. Mm -hmm. And, and once you go against, it becomes a big issue. Mm -hmm. Like a typical example, I saw a renter recently. Who renovated an apartment with over four million naira, and they told her upon her expiration she has to leave. Huh. And so she has renovated the place. Now, in the agreement they gave to her, when I looked at the agreement they gave to her, I realized that they stated it too bold that no renovation should be done without the consent of the mandate or the landlord. Wow. And these are things that we just, if we were so quick to sign without reading. Everybody um, thinks once they pay, it's done. Read what you want to sign. By long run, they want her because she, she had defaulted the agreement. So that's a very important part of renting. And finally, uh, we need to look at maintenance. Maintenance. When we are renters, we have a part to play when we are maintaining the property and the landlord also has a part to play. Mm. Now, what is the part of the landlord and what is the part of the renter? I'll quickly say it, it's, it's something big that we should talk about maybe in another uh, episode. You yeah. should talk about it too. The landlord is in charge of all structural maintenance. Mm. Can you explain that further? What structural maintenance? Okay, good. Means? When we're talking about structural maintenance, we're talking of uh, uh, the roof mm -hmm. went off. Maybe well, wide, wide wind came around mm -hmm. and then took the roof. It is structural. Mm -hmm. It is not usage. The other things are okay. Uh, the suck away or the septic tank, mm. the concrete on top of it got dipped in. Mm. It is a structural problem. Okay. Because if it was well built, it will stand the test of time. Now, if it's a, a tap that got spot, that will be taken charge by the renter. So that's because it is not structural, that is usage. Okay. Because the condition at which that tap was given to you was working. So by the time you use it and it's spot, you are required 
to fix it. it so that you can keep using it exactly so there is it, uh, there's a very thin line in between but it is it is distinct of each other structural and usage mm -hmm. so now somebody will now ask that what if the septic tank gets full there's a combined Effort, like effort, collaboration. Yes, landlord will pay his part, and then the renters will also chip in. Yes, their contribution. Their contribution. Assuming you are more than one renter, exactly, one firm. and then they get it done. Mm. It is not totally the landlord's responsibility, and it is not totally the renter's responsibility. responsibility. Mm. So that's what it is. Mm. So that's all. There are a whole lot of my range of problems that happen. Between landlord and renters. But these are the common ones. These are the most common ones. Mm. I think we've mentioned electricity. We've mentioned... Have we mentioned the electricity bills? Oh, okay, you did mention... Just a slight about, mention. Yes. Let me quickly go into it. Electricity bill, uh, for people who are using prepaid meter billing system, they don't have issues with that. You pay as you go. But for the prorated guys... Who are using okay. crazy bill? Quote yes. quote. Like so you you realize that the last renter of that apartment that you are going to take has over four hundred thousand to settle, and they've moved out. And they've moved out. They were not there. So you will be. So once you get there and you realize the billing system is not metered by prepaid, it's metered by this all this analog. Just make sure you get hold of the agent, the mandate agent, to say, okay, how is this billing system going Basically, to Basically, ask for the, the last bill, right? Yes, yeah, ask for the bill. last bill. If they did not give you, because most times, they will keep it. This is what you are going to do. Take the address of that house and just walk into the nearest PHCN office. Oh, wow. See how they do just walk in there. Once you give them their address, they'll bring out their latest bill. And then wow. they've paid or not. Wow. So that will solve that will solve you a lot of problems. So once you have that, pick the last figure on it, which is the money they have left on it. Keep it. Do a copy, send it to the agent that this is five hundred thousand that you have on this bill. But upon usage, I will continue to pay. Now this is what happens. When you pay your own monthly bill, because on, on the on the electricity bill, there is what you just used mm -hmm. and there is overdue. Hmm. So the 500000 which has been there will be at the overdue. You're using it for that month is what you're going to pay. So you're not going to be paying for what you have not used. Exactly. As it should be. As it should be. So this is what you keep because when NEPA or high BDC people arrive someday, because you now occupy that apartment, you take responsibility for that. Only two things will save you from this. Mm -hmm. Your receipt of when you moved into that apartment, wow. the agreement, and the uh, NEPA bill that you've requested for to show the NEPA guys that you are not the one that used this. So at that point, the landlord will have to take care of it and you will be free. Hmm. Updates. I hope of all the things to grab, this is the most important point, especially for electricity, because this is a major issue. So and then to wrap it up, when you're moving into a house, especially when we have these Brazilian kind of houses, mm -hmm. when I say Brazilian style, it's just English. <laughs> it is actually face me and face you kind of house. <laughs> face me and face you. Now, in those kind of places. We have observed over time mm -hmm. that we have issues of cleaning the general area, mm. cleaning the toilets, cleaning the kitchen where three or more people use. Mm. Now, when you are getting into this kind of environment, not everybody has enough to rent a, a, you know, a, a, a condominium yeah. with your own kitchen, your own mm. all of that. Make sure you ask whoever is in charge of that building to say, okay, are we pulling folks together to get someone to sweep the environment? Mm -hmm. Because the roster system of people cleaning it has failed. People now hire cleaners. Exactly. And it makes so sense. it's just better to hire a cleaner and then everybody puts phones together and pay this person. Mm. So this is what works. And then we'll continue to improve our 
the existing solutions. Okay. And now, as you have heard, these are important points that you need to note. So don't say that we've not brought better updates for you all. So the next time that you're about to rent a property or you know someone who is about to rent, make sure that they watch this video before they go renting. So thank you so much for watching this episode of Real Estate Matters with Lightweight Homes. We are definitely bringing more your way. Make sure you subscribe and we'll be seeing you in the next episode. Bye.